Hey. Welcome to Friday's Open Mic. We're going to start off with some poetry and storytelling. First off, we have Tom the World Poet, and he is going to be accompanied by Scott. Hey. Thank you all for being here at Fabulous Freddy's. I had this idea that F1 should be surpassed here. Instead of cars racing around in circles, what we have is Freddy's wonderful baristas racing around giving you your orders. So food and drink, and, and whoever does the most laps is the person who eats the most. So the contest starts now. But um, have you noticed that we've been getting some weather in Austin? I don't know, we're not used to weather. But um, that four letter word, C-O-L-D, uh, S-N-A-P, cold snap. But it's gone, don't worry. We've got sunshine now. Sound check, sound check. Thanks for coming, thanks for being here. I know you didn't come for this, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah. That, right? I'm grateful. And if you hang around long enough, I'll give you poetry anyway, because it's a really precious thing. Not poetry. It's just listening. That's uh, this one by Thomas Hardy, and um, it's about the weather. This is the weather the cuckoo likes, and so do I. When showers be tumbled, the chestnut spikes, and nestlings fly, and the little brown nightingale builds his best, and they all sit outside at the traveller's rest. And maids come for spring bosom dressed. Citizens dream of the south and the west. So do I. This is the weather the shepherd shuns. And so do I. When beaches drip in browns and duns and thresh and ply. And hill hit tides drop throw on throw. And meadow rivulets overflow. And drops on gate bars hang in a row. And rooks and families home would go, and so do I. Everybody's going to be somewhere. I'd rather be with you. Not just same space, time continued, more an ongoing conversation whereby you speak and write, and I respond to you, or virtue versa. Ha <laughs> ha! You smile as if disputing this quintessential truth. The truth is there are a few who have both time and energy. World crises drain them daily. Family needs, wounds that bleed, a million distractions creep into our bucket list until we realize we've got a hole in it. Out flows plans, intentions, schemes, dreams, memory, income appointments, schedules, lists, priorities. This isn't one of those. This is a tiny ant flag petition to you to affirm all you are and do and to keep the sun shining exactly where you are. Each night to wish upon your favorite star. Speaking of stars, last night we were at this uh, just up the road at Taco Maria's. Maria's. And we can all call it this this great big world of girl this girl. So this is what happened last night. Uh, chill, darker space, each planet orbited around each other. Planet Dam Chopra leaving for California. Ajari with his rented digital camera. Ben Franklin on free speech orbit. Planet Louise on high drama. St. Peter with the moral code. Tall Chris with a short story. Patricia Palm with a new memoir. John Berry with Matilda Gavia. Great Scott opening to every constellation. Cameras capturing light songs and poems. The blogs and websites to future unfold. Songs of a warm Austin. On a chilly South Austin evening. They say the cold snap is from Canada. I mean, I blame those Canadians. So, you know, we are, we're, 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 we're cool, we're chill, we're air conditioned, but we don't want to freeze, you know, because we're human beings. So it's about human beings. Not like human beings. When Canada's cold snap came to Austin, when F1 invaded Little Bastrop, when Typhoon Haiyan visited Taklaban, when rain washed out ACL second weekend, when floods flushed out homes in South Austin, when my friend was left powerless in heavy rains in Huddersfield, when weather predictions are less than almanac quality, when all the weather satellites fell into the seas, when extreme weather made polar bears bleed, when Fukushima said eat nothing from the sea, when extreme fills live inside Chernobyl's reactor core, when global warming is denied, yet the Gulf Street changes course. When oceans heat up, no more food from the sea. Listen to Rilke. You must change your life.
<laughs> this, this, this stuff. And then he has to agree, and then he, you know, yeah. it's like the Iliad, the Odyssey ain't shorter. We always say to the poets, think haiku, you know? What's the shortest way you can say very long truth? So um, this is a quote from him last night. And I, I took this from him because we've got the words on that one. Jesse? Jesse. That's wonderful. It's, it's gone quiet again. It's gone quiet. It's me. I've gone quiet. No, 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 it's a microphone. That's better. Yeah. Twelve. <laughs> Spinal Tap. We love Spinal Tap. Okay. This is the quote he said last night. We all know that we're immortal, and we also know we're, we're, we're mortal. Alright? So there's two things we know, and they're both contradictory. It's like a circle square. Here we go. Memento vita, by any means possible, folk are waking up to mirrors, doppelgangers, future lives, doorway, window, eyes, visions and teacups, or morning coffee swirls, worlds away, we are worlds within today. We play, consciousness a game, for those consenting particle, seeks attunement, every grain of sand seeks a beef, same with every wave, elementals meet, greet, sweet, stealing time back for real life, every night a dreamer, every night a dream, to stop time, just stop, grow slow, stretch like a cat, be where you're at, Send signals from where we are to what might be, fantasy projected cinematically, as poetry. My friend Bijan, Bijan uh, is, uh, comes from a land of poets from Iran, and uh, I just wanted to honor some of them because there's so many of them. But these are not the normal ones. Everyone knows the four letter word Rumi, they don't know the other ones. Inside this glass jar, Hafiz, Shams, Anon, Kabir, Layla. Mirabai, my washing, the last public drinking fountain, the last public clock, the last public telephone, train museum, tears, keys, locks, cats, rain. How do they all fit in? By being transparent. Days we envelope and stamp, dates, apricots, oranges, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, desert poets, song round campfire, spoken and sung, now new pussy, riot, famine. Every space has a wall for your dreams to walk through. Michael has a book, Rick has Helga, Dala has Houston, Jar of Earth covers us all eventually. Don't you wish there were seasons that we could rely upon? Without extreme weather conditions, we could go to Wordsworth Lake District for autumn. See autumn's tree strip teases leaves fall on the colour carpets. Sinks out to Cornwall when the cold seizes the winter north. The beautiful South being more than a rich retreat like the South of France or Cannes for celebrities. If we could rely upon predictions to be more than Nostradamus quatrains, then poetry might guide us away from areas of extreme change. Spin a summer sonnet, watch a sun appears, Japanese haiku, nuclear winter here, bush yarns for outback outhouses, Spanish for dictators, forms will always be function. Before wars, always call in your poets to praise more diplomacy. Because all poets are for peace, because we don't have any arms we've got to these ones. So we wave them, you know, white flag surrender, white flag skin. So this is extending light, the idea that there's certain parts we own. I mean, we're talking about ownership, he doesn't own that guitar, that's his brother's guitar. But there's something we do own, and what is it? Well, we own, we've got a little lease on our lives, okay? So we've got to take our lives back. What we do is we start with midnight to dawn, right? When no one else is awake, that's when the poets are out. That's when the vampires are out and all the hoo doo doo people. Here we go. Litany for insomniacs. Staying up late is better midnight to dawn, 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. and on and on. When cars sleep under covers, traffic suspended animation, like public transport full of chirping bird songs. That is when you hear Futures underneath your floor. Subterranean hopes rise up like heat from tribal fires. Smiles resurrect. Colors in this temporary freeze. You own what no one wants, which makes it easy. King of the homeless with a full shopping trolley. Now roll down limits and roll up role play. You can be anyone today except Anon and Zaley. Today is not your first day. It's the time you steal back to make, create, dream architecture. Birds can nest with him. You better, you better, you better sing. Oh, thank you, thank you. This means a lot. And it's getting thicker. 
That's wonderful. So, uh, my pleasure. Yes. Just to handle the baby and, yeah. <laughs> and check everything out. All right. A round of applause for Tom World Poet. Oh, you're wonderful. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to have Scott, who is accompanying him on guitar. We're going to have him. Yes. Do he's wonderful. Thing. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, he's got Thank you. Now, baby, can't be here because look, camera. Camera. <coughs> hmm? Oh. So, um. You want me to move over around? Right over this way and you can have some chips. So, we, we were all guilty of that. No, none of us. Guilt, I don't like it. Well, maybe a few of us. To blame. Whether you chose to be an open back or not, you're on one now, so we're the poets are very thankful for that. Tom recently mentioned a poem that he gave me a couple of journals and he started writing again. He said, put your ideas in them. Later he a poem that said, I'm a blank journal, write in me. <laughs> and I think the days are like that. Yeah, they are. And I think the poets feel that any little mark on the blank page of a day is better than none at all. And any parent or anybody who's ever seen a child's drawing will know that when we put a mark on the day or Put a little bit of our heart in the things we do. The people around us. The world gets to be a better place. <laughs> that being said, I want to tell a short story. I'll well, see how short it is. I'm going to tell how long they are and how short they are. There was an old man who used to live in a city. Some of you are going to know some of this, and some of you may not know any of it. He was a writer. Tom may correct me, but I believe he was in Mexico. The man's name was Jorge Luis Borges. He was one of the founders of something called magical realism. Most of us know magical realism because we've seen it like water for chocolate. It's the kind of story that can take you out of yourself and into another world. But it's based on this place we're all in. And I have sort of a magical, realistic perspective about this whole thing. Well, the way he used to write, he was blind in his later years. Poses, short stories that point in his head. And he would just sit, listen, and hear stories. And then he would tell them to a friend later, a translator. And then they would get written, put into our world. Well, tonight I want to be the blind man telling a story. And maybe later tonight I'll be the translator writing out the coin. In each of us, there's a desire to watch a film or a movie. And if we harken back, we can all think of the great films you ever saw. We remember them fondly. We think about how good they made us feel. And many of us will go home tonight, tune into Netflix or a DVD, and go into that other world where we can believe something exists outside ourselves. But well, when I was 
living at my house with my kids. My daughter was three years old. She was learning how to blow soap bubbles. I like a lot of films. I have a collection of my favorites. Yesterday I was at a hip hop show. The greatest film I ever saw was Randy Crocus. Rainbow and that one three year old girl's Tonight, the poets will get out and they'll tell their stories. Little soap bubbles, and hopefully, you'll be able to remember the rainbow's line. Yeah, thanks. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Applause for Scott, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Louise, come on up here. Hey, Louise. Yeah. <coughs> that was my first. Oh, it's a camera. <laughs> not your left. Not my left. living in San Francisco and I got very homesick. So as beautiful as San Francisco is, when you think about back home in Texas, you might, San Francisco might compare poorly with Texas just in your nostalgic memory. Gulf daydreams. Even now, as I walk briskly chilled by a wall of San Francisco wind, even now, the gulls skim from sun to wave on a honey-warm Texas morning. The breeze there is a kinder one. It does not crest but embraces. The sun, not just a damp yellow crescent, rules the sky, the shore, and the sea. The birds there, not all business like their California cousins, thrive and grow sassy on jumbo shrimp and picnic leftovers. I'll go back there before too long. I'll crinkle my toes in the warm gulf sand. The loving wind will fly my hair at full mast. The gulls will hover to catch bits of my lunch. Then I'll say, I've come home. I've come home for the first and last time. This is an environmental poem I wrote when I was in college. The lot. It was the last patch of green on earth. Just a lot it was, grown up with Johnson grass and thistles, and encircled by a ring of shade trees, post oak, cedar, and sycamore. Their leaves spotted the setting sunlight, and from inside them came myriad mockingbird cries, anticlimactically proclaiming, This is my last domain. Sad I thought that this uninspired spot was the last lot left. I could reel my thoughts to lands past, bountiful belts, heroic steps, noble tundra, rare oases of arid climes, serene northern woods, rainforest lush, all harbors of vibrant life, all magnificent, and all more worthy to remain than this weedy backyard. This refuge from a developer's plow was all there was. All around stretched the asphalt world of concrete and gypsum and glass and steel. 
barren sand covered the surrounding hills. Beneath the orange and gray troposphere, the black-green sludge pools sparkled with oil rainbows. The highway net was strung from sea to vacant sea. Tomorrow it would be the last of it. The ever-present bulldozers, the instruments of rape would come. The little green lot would be no more. A chalky gravel mobile home park then would take this wasted space for itself. While it lasted, the lot was the vestige of spring, but all too quickly, the impatient sun was setting. Thank you. And back to the golf. Seagull morning. I fly to the dawning sun. It washes the stars from the sky. Its brilliant glare blinds for a time and brightly glitters yellow and auburn amid the tiny silver mirrors in the lapping waves of the morning gulf. I angle left in my flight. The light blue haze claims the horizon and the darker blue takes all of the sun save for the golden orb itself and beams which shine like spotlights down through massive blocks of white roving clouds. Now dipping down to water, I follow a school of running fantail shrimp and deftly I, kept, I catch one, dive, catch another. Then climbing sunward, I look down at leaping mullet, shooting like little rockets from crest to crest missing an occasional cabbage head riding with the waves. Ranging to the vast mud flats, I see stilted herons and cranes and post-perched pelicans wading and pecking for little crabs and clams. And humans crawl the granite jetties with their cluttered tools and sweet bait. Some toss breadcrumbs to my swarming friends. The sea is turning black-brown. The dark green disappears in the oily wake. Unaware of danger, I dive for a small fish. My body turns greasy and sticky, useless. I drift to the sand and twist my head to preen. I gulp the dark poison and succumb to progress. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Louise. Let's give her a round of applause for coming out. Thank you. We have a newcomer today. We have Bijan. Can you come up here? Yeah, he, he drove all the way from San Marcos. Yeah, caught the bus actually. Actually took the bus uh, this morning uh, and did a few things and took the bus back down from North Austin, but you know, I'll just leave that. <clears throat> Y'all like this poetry? Just ask me and I'll give you a copy of this volume that I just self-published. <laughs> I appear right here for you to hear, an MC with courage and no fear. My dear, sincerely, wrote a lengthy note to promote our strength increasingly. Thanks to the ranks of anonymous donors, the crease of these papers, stapled for listeners, like butter, like maple syrup in the winter. Throw out the rice cookers and let's make some dinners. Dinner. Blowing the saxophone like Charlie Parker, we made that the park before it gets darker. Mixing, mastering chapters, borrowed books and inside jokes of laughter. Took off sorrows and tears after appearing here. Steer the poetry vessels into piers, into gears. Faster at changing gloom into cheer than a cold beer in a new year. Who knew educators could be entertainers and vice versa? Here appears the Ahura Mazda, truth bringer, godfather, youth trainer of many authors to bother an explanation on our trials and tribulations, paying tribute in a process historical in its nature leading to this pavement. The oratory is versatile and uses improvisation, the best to test manifested pollution, clean up crews with the blues, use intuition as well as finger picking. Breaking institutional pressure, making clever measures to sell like vendors. Telling splendorous stories as a public offer. The elemental worship like fire. Rhythmic instrumentals can inspire. Street corner raps next to tires. Be happy. 
It feels good to be alive, ever better cause you give me pride. Never hiding from hard work until you die. Try to test the most high, God Allah will barely bat an eye. To all people under the sky, true good cannot be commodified. Blues in your neighborhood on the curbside. Ride bikes, live mics, studious types. Soothe the trust and muster in the fight to type our rights. Line by line in the candlelight. Winning on the small scale never fails in the larger sight. The best medicine can be written while the best procedures can be freestyled in leisures. Pulling levers of clever measures for an audience through receivers, audio trained visitors. Checking the flow like traffic passengers, passages that prefer to be heard with collaborators. As narrators shift points of view, waiting on delivery, paying dues. Attacking a pack like a, a plan like a traveler's map. The history of survival is to adapt. Listen to the memorable. Look for the immeasurable. Touching the taste of your smelly soul. Well, this place has ceilings made of gold. When you come and go, stop by for a rhyme full of the pull, pull I found in your town. A time of sound. Like right. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a website called palaceofrhymes.com, unofficially Palace of Rhymes for Palestine, and this is called Mid August Bust. I'd rather you read my poetry, but since other senses d suggest dimensionality, sound quality will be following, bound like books that found streams and brooks. There's no off day for a cook, everybody has to eat. And what took so long getting down the street was all the peeps we meet. Calm, unity. Abstracts never...